Uh, all right. Well, there's a another story I can share with you about um, my second recording. You know, the first one was with Jimmy, the My Diary song, which was born on New Year's Day at the Wilcox Hotel. After a night of passion, Jimmy picked up his guitar. He walked over to the sofa and it was propped up again, leaned up against the sofa. He picked it up and he started playing this real pretty melodies. Sounded like some Curtis Mayfield. And uh, when I asked him what was it, you know, because I thought maybe it was uh, something, he, you know, a new song or something. I said, what is that? And he said, oh, just some love notes. And so he said, I know that I will never love again. I know that I will be my only friend. That's what he said while he was playing the music. And then I said, but if I could, I'd like for you to see the love sickening image I turned out to be. That was us. That mor that morning, it was around noon actually, but uh, the song was born right then and there. That was our baby. And for those out there who are confused as to who wrote our song, I'll say it again. Arthur Lee would have had to been a fly on the wall to write that song. He had no parts in it. I only invited him when the session was about to begin. I asked him to do background vocals. And that was his total involvement. My mistake was giving him a copy of the recording. Hmm? Because he did wonders with that record. Somebody created a bogus label and put his name on it. That he was the writer. <laughs> and it really made me sad. It made me sick. That here we are. You grave robbing. You, a black man. Robbing another black man for something you didn't have anything to do with other than singing background and helping the background vocalists do the parts that was background. It broke my heart. It made me angry. I had to tell somebody because I didn't even know my daughter Yvonne, God rest her soul, I just lost my baby last year, 2016, on September the 6th. So I have, September is a real heavy month for me, because not only did she pass in September, my mom passed on September the 13th, 2011, and Jimmy, of course, passed on September the 18th, 1970. It's a hard month, I tell you. Harder, getting harder, and gotten harder. Anyhow, um, I wrote the song with Jimmy, and uh, I was, like I said, devastated and angry uh, by him claiming to have written our song. And I never was in the Jimmy world up until then in 1991 when I discovered and my daughter brought home a book she was at this Esawan bookstore and she was looking at a book by David Henderson called excuse me while I kiss the sky 
And the guy that worked at the store asked her, what do you know about Jimi Hendrix? And she said, oh, I know Jimi Hendrix. My mom and him were an item. And he was like my dad. And uh, he said, what's your mom's name? And he told, she told him my name. And he went to the glossary or whatever and, and looked it up. And there were two pages in the, excuse me while I kiss the sky book, that talked about me. And it said that Arthur Lee uh, was messed, dealing with this chick named Rosalie Brooks. And he also called me Rosa Parks in that book. Um, but anyway, he claimed to have took me in the studio, had a song, and he heard about this bad cat in town, and that would be Jimi Hendrix. Oh, lies. And uh, he was claiming to have produced the song and everything. He was 18 years old. Had no money and no means. And would not have been able to do anything of the sort. He wasn't involved. So my daughter brought this book home and it had this information in it. And I had to correct that. So I got in touch with a gentleman in um, Novato, California who ran a fanzine called Straight Ahead. That was my entrance into the Jimmy world in 1991, I think, maybe 92. Um, that I wanted to get my story out there. So he, he did my very first interview, Steve Roby, with the Straight Ahead newsletter. And Juma Sultan was one of the tech technical uh, directors on that magazine uh, at the time and I became a technical consultant on there and um, I shared I actually did like three of his fanzines including that first interview that I did but I wrote some other things in there and, and a couple of more afterwards but I was able to get my story told in that sense and little by little over time um, people have begun to know the truth and that's all I want you know I just want people to know the truth <laughs>